Friday evening. Uh, this is not the easiest place to get to uh, because Sorry. of uh, Friday night traffic and then the, the way the streets are laid out here. So I really appreciate you all coming here on a Friday. Um, I have about a hundred slides wow. and this is about a fifth or slightly less than, uh, slightly more than a fifth of my entire US content. So it's really going to be touching on the highlights. Uh, it was a lot more than 100 slides, but I cut them, cut, cut it down so that it doesn't. We're not here till like midnight. But. So, <laughs> if I calculate right, it'll take. If the talk's supposed to last an hour, I got about 30 seconds per slide yeah. to finish on time. So we'll see. Some slides are going to be longer. Some slides will just fly through. Okay. Um, my name is Noel. I usually just use my first and last name. Uh, I don't usually use my middle name. But today is special. I also picked today for the talk because I love Friday the 13th. Because my middle name is Jason. Uh, so anybody who knows Friday the 13th? Yeah. Okay, so uh, briefly, uh, I went to school in the US. I studied in the US from 2006 to 2010. 2011, I worked in the US. 2012 and 2011, I returned to Singapore in October. I started the National Parks Board in Singapore uh, first day of the year 2012, and I'm still with them. So it's been uh, six, six and a half years with uh, NPARX. Uh, 2015, I went back to the US uh, to uh, help in Costa Rica again and then in the US because a big part of the US helping experience is in Arizona, which I didn't do my first time around. So I went back for Arizona. We will see Arizona at the very end of our talk because we're moving uh, chronologically through the, the slides. Okay, so let's see if the clip works. Okay, okay so uh, we're gonna see Lots of uh, herb tiles, so mainly uh, reptiles and amphibians. Of your reptiles, you're mainly going to see a lot of snakes because I said I was going to save the highlights, right? So just happens that there'll be a lot of snakes. Uh, some lizards, you'll get gators, you'll get uh, turtles, and amphibians. Uh, something that we lack here, but one of my favorite uh, amphibians are found in the US and other countries uh, are the salamanders. So salamander sirens and viumas, this, this group of them, uh, newts. So in Singapore, I think if you go to Thailand, you can find your first newt. Uh, you can definitely, if you go further up, like Hong Kong and things like that. Okay, so uh, this pretty much sums up the US helping experience for me. It's to find a rattlesnake that's in its classic uh, defensive pose. So they do this by, they pick the head up, they flick their tongue, they put it above their head, and they just buzz, they buzz loudly. If you've never heard of rattlesnake, it's loud. Uh, we will look, we will, we will come through some videos that we can see how rattlesnakes actually uh, make that sound, and we will learn quite a bit about these animals as we go. Okay, so firstly, uh, the US. There are 50 states. Uh, I've been to 33 of them. Uh, I would like to visit all uh, 50 one day. Uh, this portion is a bit hard, the, the northeast, because it's all the ADVD states. But most of the states that, that's got uh, biodiversity, uh, believe me, I've been there. So I spent a lot of time in the southeast. Um, Arizona, this, this area here is really good for uh, herbs. Uh, that's mainly, well not mainly because, but it's also where it sits. You know what's down here, right? Mexico. <laughs> Yeah. With the, Mexico has the most number of uh, snakes anywhere in the world. So you might think it's Australia or India, but really the diversity is in Mexico. Uh, they sit in a biodiversity hotspot. Uh, so Southeast Asia is very similar to what you get in like Central America. You get uh, everlasting uh, tropical rainforest, and that makes it, it, we are really sitting in a gem. I mean, you know how big Singapore is? We got over 60 snakes. You know how amazing that fact is? Really? Like, anybody, are you, are you from the UK? Yeah. You got three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've only seen two. You only seen two. <laughs> I've only seen one. I've seen the rarest one, the smooth snake. Uh, I have not seen your viper and your uh, grass snake. Okay. Okay, so we'll start in Texas. Texas, because that's where I lived uh, most of my time, and that's where I went to school. <coughs> okay? So we will start with this guy. There are four people I want to mention by name through my helping experience because these four people are very integral in developing who I am today uh, as a helper. Okay, this is Scott. Uh, I went to the US not knowing anybody in the nature community. 
Uh, I, will, I got out of class in college, I was sitting in the library studying, not joking, it was math, I had to study it. <laughs> I see this guy walk past, and herpers can recognize herpers. Okay? He wasn't wearing a snake with a giant a, a shirt with a giant snake on it. Uh, nothing. But just his get up, he was wearing this like drab green shirt with shorts and lots of cuts on his leg and flip-flops. So just walked up to him and was like, hey man, you're a helper? And he went, Yeah, how about you? And I'm like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's it's that. I found my first dude. So I'm like, okay, what where can I find stuff around here? This is in Houston. So he said, oh, you can go to this, 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 this place. But he said, hey, you know what? It's July. Uh, it's rainy. Let's go out and find some stuff. So within the week, I met up with Scott. We, in the US, we all drive. We both draw, drove to a park. This, uh, it's called um, Brazos Valley, Brazos Valley, Back Creek Park. Okay, we end up in Back Creek Park, and not on the usual trail where people walk, but this is the uh, equestrian trail where they horse ride. So nobody's horse riding in the rainy season. So the water's up to your um, ankles most of the time, and in some parts it's up to your knee. So the whole trail is completely flooded. Um, we walked there, and this was my first snake in the US. Okay, so not just one, but eight of them on this first trip in this park. Uh, this is the uh, cotton mouth, also known as the water moccasin. So a lot of these snakes have many common names. Um, the scientific name, Pisciverus, means it's actually a fish eater. Okay, so cottonmouths are very common in the southeast. Uh, there are several species that range uh, across west to Florida. Um, these snakes usually are found near water, uh, bayous, and things like that. Uh, because of their diet, they eat fish. Uh, this is one of the venomous species that you get in um, the U.S. and Herping in the U.S. is very different from tropical herping. It's, you pretty much walk your entire trip looking at the ground. Everything is on the ground. There are no like, true arboreal snakes. There are some snakes that get up in the trees, but herping <coughs> usually uh, involves looking at the ground. So, um, this is a video. Uh, I hope it works. So this is that first guy. And that's their, um, I'll talk a bit more about it. But that's its defensive posture when it flicks its tail like that. Okay, so about that, this was 2006. That was the best video quality I could have. Yeah, so I took this with my um, little Fuji Fine Fix uh, uh, snapshot camera. That was my camera then. I didn't have a better one. Okay, why are they called? Okay, why are they call cotton mouths? Because of their mouth. Yeah, because the inside of the mouth is completely white. That's how they get that common name, uh, cotton mouth. Um, believe it or not, before this guy, I had not seen a waggler spit viper in Singapore. So this was not only my first snake in the US, it was actually my first wild viper. Yeah, so it, I, I remember this snake very much. Mm, Hopping in Texas, before I uh, got any formal training, was uh, a lot of times with Scott, who I introduced earlier, uh, it was a lot of flipping. You can't really flip here. Flip is, flipping is uh, looking for cover. Cover may be uh, naturally fallen uh, branches or logs or rocks, or it may be artificially placed, meant for herping. So these could be uh, pieces of board, pieces of zinc, or even like an old carpet. So uh, over there, it gets cold, uh, snakes do go undercover. So you can just go out herping and you can flip cover and you can find stuff. So this is a baby cotton mouth that was flipped. Uh, that's a Mississippi ringneck snake, uh, also flipped. Uh, flipping doesn't work so well in Singapore because, I mean, all year round our temperature kind of stays about the same. Their snakes don't really use cover that way. They have their fixed, they have homes which they go to or, yeah. Okay, so flipping doesn't really work. These are snakes that were flipped. Okay, also in Texas or in the US, uh, keeping reptiles and amphibians is legal. So uh, to understand herpetology, you really want to understand all the different facets of it. You want to understand field herping, you want to understand husbandry, you want to understand the trade. So I spent a lot of my early years uh, over there uh, learning about what the trade was, but that's also how I got, that's how I got uh, exposed to a lot of what's going on here. 
Uh, these are bearded dragons, so they're not from the US, but yeah, it's a pretty cool photo. Uh, this is what a reptile show looks like in the US. So again, the pictures are really bad, but uh, what you will see chronologically is also the photos get better towards the end of the So you can grow on this journey with me. Uh, all these are snakes for sale, and they have designer morphs like that. Uh, all the little labels on the top are price tags. So price tags could be as low as like 1990 to something that's thousands of dollars or something like that. Those guys go for like uh, $3,500, like $3,000. <coughs> So they have these once a year symposiums. Uh, usually, that are uh, held after a herd conference as well, because that's when the people are there, where they, they trade and sell um, animals as you keep these animals that you keep as pets. Uh, you cannot do that in Singapore, so please don't be keeping like snakes or um, any other reptiles here, other than the few that you can, which are really just two. Okay, so and then I started uh, university. And then, when I first got into, I got into Texas a and University. Uh, why did I go to this school? When I was a kid, when the internet was very, very simple, I googled veterinary colleges around the world. I found this list in the UK, US, Australia. I just happened to look at the list. Back then, ABA in Singapore recognized only six US veterinary colleges. And I, so I just remembered the name of the six. So there was Cornell and all the big ones. And AM was one of them. AM is a very good um, veterinary program as well as a science program as well. Uh, a and M actually stands for agriculture and mechanics and everything that comes under that. The T is Texas. <coughs> okay, so once I got in, I started signing up for classes. And immediately I signed up for like the ones I was interested in. I signed up for memology first and I got in. Uh, I was a junior then. Junior means I'm year three. And I signed up for memology, I signed up for cordial anatomy. And then I went to sign up for herpetology, which was the class I really, really wanted to take. And I clicked on it, scrolled down, and it said four. Okay? So I tried clicking on it. No, it didn't work. I wrote in to my advisor. I said, I need to see you about a class. Next morning, I went in. I spoke to my advisor and said, I really need to take herpetology. And she said, um, it's full. I said, OK. Um, then she said, oh, it's a WFSC 401 class. Uh, you're a junior. 401, 400 classes are taken by seniors, 300 classes are taken by uh, juniors, uh, 200 by sophomores, and 100 by freshmen. So that's how the college uh, course catalog goes. So I was trying to take a senior level course one year early. But I said, no, you don't understand. I really need to take this class. So I managed to convince her by this interest that I have. But she said, my hands are tied. I can't do anything. You need to go talk to the professor. And I said, okay, give me his address. I went over to his office. And he was there. That's the guy on the left over there. So uh, that's uh, Dr. Fitzgerald. We call him Lee. Um, I walked into his office and said, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, it's nice to meet you. Uh, your class is full, but I really want to take it. And then he looked at me and curtly said, but it's full. So I said, yeah, I know, but um, is there anything you can do? And then he said the same thing. Come back next year and take it and sign up early. Then I said, mm, no, I really have to take it now. So he couldn't understand this urgency. But you know, sometimes you just got to think in a split decision. And 10 seconds can affect the rest of your life. This was that moment. When I had to tell him something, that was going to let me take this class one year early because I'm going to progress to herpetology one year earlier. My senior year, I can do all kinds of projects and everything. And then I said, um, you know, I've caught a reticulated python before. <laughs> and uh, when I was a kid, I saw black spitting cobras. And his eyes just lit up. <laughs> <laughs> okay? sure. So this, he was just like, OK, OK. We can make a slot. <laughs> he wrote back to my advisor and said, uh, Amanda, I would like to permit Noel Thomas to enter blah, blah, blah course this year, as he will bring international <coughs> prospects, to, international views to things. So that's how I got into class. <coughs> Since then, it was uh, through him, I got into the Texas Hypological Society, the East Texas Hypological Society. These are all different things. Uh, this was my class. Uh, I won't talk about all the boring, um, 
classroom stuff that's just studying the science. The lab was really cool. So uh, lab was a lot of specimens, but to pass a field course there, to pass a science course, you need a field module. So it was three hours of uh, coursework, but one hour of field work. So this one hour was three field trips. These field trips where you will really put out there, you go find stuff, catch it, bring it back. Um, over there, it's very hands-on. People get into herpetology, especially other than things like ornithology, because you don't really get to handle like stuff. You see birds and turbinos. <laughs> herpetology is very hands-on. It's all about handling, touching, feeling. Yeah. So this was my class in one of the field trips. Um, we went out, caught stuff, bagged it, brought it back. Uh, sometimes not knowing exactly what we're catching. Oh, yeah. No. So we know we know all the copperheads, we know the cotton mouths, we know the rattlesnakes, and really that's all you have to worry about there. There were no uh, coral snakes here. So the rest of them are colubrids in the US and really quite fine to pick up. We picked up a whole bunch of stuff, brought it back. Uh, this is a speckled king snake, a very, very pretty snake. Uh, called a king snake because it eats other snakes. Yeah, so um, this guy can eat rattlesnakes even. Yeah, it's quite amazing. As you can see, he doesn't really have a neck. His neck head doesn't taper down, so it makes it quite much easier to swallow a larger snake. Okay, so this is where I learned all my field techniques as well. Um, we learned how to scale clip. Scale clipping is a um, not really very in invasive way of tagging a snake. Uh, all you do is clip one of their ventral scales. Um, there's a system to clip it. You can clip it by date, you can clip it by number that you're clipping. So we learn how to do that with the right equipment. Uh, we also learn how to handle. So we learn how to tube snakes. So uh, this is another cotton mouth, a very common snake there. Uh, we learn how to wrangle it into a tube. And then once the head of the snake is safely in the tube, uh, you can get the information you want from it. You can get samples, blood samples, fecal samples. Uh, you can measure it safely and things like that. Uh, that's getting musked by the. Uh, 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 okay, so the class was really just going out, a lot of handling. That's a, a garter snake. That's a tiger salamander. Uh, yeah, that's a rattlesnake. So um, we count the uh, beads on the tail of the rattlesnake. This gives you a rough gauge of how old the snake is. Uh, it does not relate directly to one bead one year, but it's more like each time this snake sheds its skin, it adds one more layer. So if you see one with a really long rattle, you know that it's a longer, it's an older individual. Yeah. So yeah, this was uh, holding the head away with uh, uh, the tongs while handling the snake and all that. So these are things that were very practical when we learned. Um, and then I saw something like that for the first time. <laughs> and back then I was like, what the hell is that? I had no idea. I had a little point and shoot camera. I was staring at that thing. And back then I really didn't know what all these bits and gadgets were. But yeah, that's basically how you photograph reptiles. You can see uh, all the guys there are using stroke flashes or secondary flashes, and they're taking pictures of these like tiny, tiny snakes. So this was my also my first plunge into the world of uh, photography. Yeah, uh, Darren's camera. We'll meet Darren later. He's very important. Okay. Also, learn, learning herpetology is about learning how to get bitten. So you work with snakes, you are going to get bitten. You just got to be very careful with the venomous snakes. You don't let a venomous snake bite you. But the non-venomous snakes, it's really okay if they bite you, if you don't mind. Yeah. So getting bitten was part of it, lots of that. Uh, that is a juvenile yellow belly racer. Non-venomous. Okay. So earlier those guys were photographing this snake. It's a tentilla, known as a flat-headed snake. Uh, it's a fossorial snake, lives under the sand. Um, that's also a very common snake. That snake is killed a lot in the US because people think it's a cotton mouth. Yeah, that's a yellow-bellied, or they can call plain-bellied water snake. Uh, these guys live in the exact same areas that cotton mouths do. They can be found side by side. They don't eat each other, they're fine. But people see these things, they kill it. These are harmless snakes, but these are stinky snakes. Yeah, the moment you pick them up, they musk all over you. So musk is a, a secretion that snakes can emit from the, their cloaca. Their cloacas, they are common opening for everything. 
<laughs> so urine, uh, feces, reproduction, everything. Okay. So we found uh, lots of leaf litter snakes, like the brown snake. Uh, that was my first green frog. Um, after that, I saw like hundreds. Yeah, but that's the, that first one. It wasn't very uh, attractive, this one. These guys can get quite pretty. Okay, uh, that's a horned lizard. These are the guys that um, eat ants and can also do what? Spray blood. Spray blood. Spray blood from their eyes, yeah. I've never seen that behavior. There's that one video that's online, right, with a coyote, I think, that's trying to attack the lizard, and the lizard squirts out blood from its eye. Yeah. This guy can do that, but no, they don't usually do that. Uh, they are called horny toads in the US, because they're very small, and they're very squat. Although they're lizards, they really look like a toad. Yeah. Very charismatic animals. Okay, so this is Darren. Darren was my TA during her class. He was my teacher's assistant. So he would help with the, not so much with the lectures, but he, con he conducted the lab session, and he also helped with the, um, the field work. So Darren is very important because when I talk to any undergraduate these days, and they said, hey, what's the best way to uh, get into this and that? I say, you focus on your interests and find yourself a PhD student, a grad student, who's working on your interests and then you stick to him like glue. <laughs> because they are going to welcome the help, but you're going to learn so much from them. So I spent a lot of time, uh, after the class ended, I'm glad I took it early with Darren. Uh, Darren was studying uh, turtles. So we go into these uh, alligator-ridden waters uh, to catch alligator snapping turtles, <clears throat> but often we just catch alligator gar that come into the nets, and actual alligators coming to chomp on the nets. Yeah, but we only got uh, baby uh, snapping turtles. Um, we are looking for the uh, alligator snapping turtles, the microchilies. Okay, so that was uh, the kind of traps that we set up, and that was when I became really quite wild as well. <laughs> so uh, I let my, my hair grow out, and you were constantly dirty, because this was also when I just was thought that if there's a body of water, you're just supposed to walk into it with like no inhibition. So we just do that because that's how we go and like find things. So I started with like uh, knee deep water, waist deep water, and soon I was just wading in chest deep water looking for stuff in the, the swamps and stuff like that. So you become quite wild. Okay, uh, and then yeah, lots more field work. Uh, this was me carrying everything you need to set up to catch turtles. Uh, so, and this, picture over there was a picture of me trying to take a picture of a snake and grab it at the same time. <laughs> this was the 2010 Lake Creek Park Bio Blitz, the first Bio Blitz that I did. It was a 24-hour Bio Blitz and no one has broken my record.